What up space fam, Gozen here from Anime Uproar back at it again to discuss the latest developments in the One Piece story. We got a surprise appearance that might just change everything in Wano, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you do enjoy One Piece and want to keep the reviews coming, channel the Pirate King within and smash that like button with no mercy. If you haven't, join the Nakama right now by hitting that subscribe button and most importantly hit that notification bell or you will miss future One Piece videos. And while you wait for the next intense chapter to drop, up, feel free to check out our growing One Piece playlist where we got videos about Yonko, Warlord, Supernova, and more. Link to that is in the description. Now without further ado, let's jump into it. Spoilers and all. So this chapter is called Kibidango, and it's the realization of what we've been expecting to happen for a while now. Tama uses her Dango powers to turn many Smile users on her side, just like she did with Speed. Since it worked on Speed, we could only assume that it was a matter of time before she used it on the others, and she does. Everyone, even 8-year-old Tama, is playing a part in this battle. I enjoy seeing Speed Speed tricked the others, telling them that the special dongo was given to her by Queen and that they should help them heal faster. You combine Speed's attractiveness level with the placebo effects of the dongo, and you get men straight up saying they feel better after taking it. At least they think they do. She even tells gifters that it'll boost their physical strength and so she gets what she wants, while making the victims extremely excited and grateful about it. Speed is doing a great job here. Speed also recalls how Tama bravely wanted to go to Onigashima while no one would let her go, and Speed decided to help her. We see how Tama has been working tirelessly to create Dango after Dango. She creates so much it looks like she's fallen into one of McDonald's ball pits. It goes without saying that this must be a huge strain on her body Body, especially for someone who's been underfed so much. But she keeps going because she dreams of a Wano without Orochi or Kaido. She's sick of always being hungry and wants to be allowed to have rice too. Moments like this not only make you care about Tama, they also put into perspective that there are people out there who are always hungry and have to struggle hard just to have rice. This battle isn't just about Luffy beating Ayanko and getting closer to being a pirate king. It's also about changing people's daily lives for the better, saving them from the ever present threat and pain of starvation. This is what I like about Luffy's journey. It's not just about becoming a pirate king for your own sake. It also includes improving the world and people's day-to-day -day lives in the process. We see smile user after smile user get dongos shoved into their mouths. The Tama army is growing and you gotta love to see it. We take a break from Tama to join Frankie and Sasaki who are engaged in an intense battle. Sasaki seemed like one of the stronger Flying Six members so it's great to see Frankie doing so well. I love to see him lift a dinosaur by his horn and send him flying. Frankie's been pretty great in Wano, but I don't know if he'll be able to match the epicness of riding a motorcycle on Big Mom's face. This fight is not a fair one though, and you can't necessarily expect a fair fight when dealing with pirates. That's kind of the point. Here, Sasaki's gifter men grab hold of Frankie, and he actually can't move. The men are too strong when working together. Sasaki is going to charge into him with his horn, and there's nothing Frankie can do. However, Tama, Usopp, and Nami appear. In another classic moment of Oda humor, Frankie is about to ask for help when he's interrupted by Nami and Usa bawling their eyes out and screaming for his help. It looks like they're being chased by an army of countless enemy smile users. Sasaki gets smug, saying this is what happens when you are overwhelmed by superior numbers. But Tama shines and says that's why she's here. This girl has made a huge difference. She's like an animal army's kryptonite. Sasaki then sees that Usopp and Nami were of course fake it and the army of smile users attack Sasaki in order to help Frankie as Tama commanded. Frankie manages to get out of the way in time and as Sasaki tries to figure out what is going on, Ulti and Page 1 appear to tell him that the others are traitors. They don't know exactly why and how their men turned, but hopefully they don't figure out that Tama is behind it and target her specifically. As Ulti is about to cave in Nami's head again, Nami gets her chance to shine hitting Ulti, a flying six member with lightning. Pikachu would be proud. Sure, it's not a KO, and Nami knows that Ulti won't be down for long, but it's so epic to see Nami hold her own against such a strong opponent. She's really developed as a fighter more than I ever thought she would. And as a side note, I love how creative Oda is being with these weather-based attacks. There's so much potential and versatility for Nami here. And then we see our boy Usopp using his lethal Dongo Star move, which as you may have imagined, includes him launching Tama's mind control dongos into the mouths 
of his enemies. I love how they're not only overcoming the sheer number advantage of the enemy, they are actually using it to their advantage by making them switch sides. Teamwork is the key here and everyone is playing a really important role. Imagine how much worse the situation would be if Tama didn't make it here. As Sasaki is trying to wrap his head around everything, he gets a Frankie sword to the chin. And then Frankie gets him good with a victory V flash. Things have taken a complete 180 since we joined the outnumbered Frankie a few pages ago. We finally return to Sanji who is not in good shape. We're told that Sanji could crush the males, but he couldn't lay a finger on the females, so he never stood a chance. And although everything will probably work out well, you can't help but wonder about Sanji's unwillingness to take on female enemies being a liability for the crew. They want him to call Nico Robin and in exchange they'll free him. Black Maria reveals herself to be a complete savage when she says that she'll break all of Robin's limbs so she won't be able to run away. Robin is obviously very useful for them and they can use her to find the One Piece, and when you think about it, it's really cool that Luffy already has such a desired figure on his crew. Sanji tells them not to underestimate Robin before we jump to Bao Huang, the walking and talking surveillance system. But before that, let me know your thoughts here on Sanji. How will he get out of this? And do you think he's still just messing around until he gets all the information he can from them? I look forward to seeing him shine more in this arc before it's through, especially when you got Zoro cutting the strongest creature in the world nearby. But anyways, Bao Huang spots the red scabbards in a dark room. They're breathing, which is a good sign, but definitely not in good shape. King says he's got his hands full at the moment, another cool update as he was fighting Marco. He does have time though to give orders for someone else to go and Black Maria takes the role on. Sanji tells her not to dare go near them, but looks powerless to help. I hate to see Sanji so seemingly powerless at the moment. But then we get the most significant twist in this whole chapter. There are 10 people in the room. It's dark, so she doesn't know who the 10th is, but there's definitely someone there helping the samurai. We're asked who it could be as we're shown the figure in shadow, who could be just about anyone, and it also seems like there will be a break next week, so we'll have to wait longer to find out. Let me know who you think it is and why in the comments. I can't wait to read all of your theories. Honestly, I don't know who it is, but with the way things have been developing with CP0 being present, I'd like to think it's Shanks. I saw this fan-made art of a manga volume in Wano where it shows Luffy and all four other Yonko, including Shanks and Blackbeard. I've discussed many reasons why I feel Blackbeard will show up, including the fact that he's an opportunist, he is with Moria who has wanted revenge against Kaido forever, and he might want to grab Kaido's devil fruit, and complete the OP trilogy. If Blackbeard does show up as I expect him to, would it make sense for Shanks not to show up? It seems like the perfect opportunity to get all Yonko, including Luffy, the so-called Fifth Emperor, to be at the same place at the same time in Wano. Imagine how huge it would be for the newspapers, the hype, and for everything else. If Luffy and his team beat Kaido and Big Mom, then we may never have such a good opportunity again for all the Yonko to meet. The Yonko title might even cease to exist or stop being significant if two are taken down at the same time. For these reasons, along with the fact that Shanks was on Roger's crew and knew Odin and wanted to help him before, it seems to me that he's going to make an appearance even if this specific silhouette doesn't turn out to be him. I don't think he'd steal Luffy's thunder or interfere with his Yonko battle, but him being present in case CP0 or someone else wants to finish Luffy and his crew after an exhausting battle makes sense. I could see Shanks helping in that kind of way where he's not directly going to beat another Yonko, but he's going to minimize the chances for foul play, like someone swooping in to finish off the winning side. And in the meantime, why not protect the red scabbards? Again, there are more likely scenarios, but it would be a very cool possibility and the one I was most excited about considering. Since Shanks and Blackbeard both have history with Odin and possible motivations for coming to Wano, it seems like a missed opportunity if they don't join the other Yonko in Wano, even if Shanks doesn't play a definitive role in ending the conflict. But as always, let me know your thoughts, this is just me thinking out loud. And that is it for this video. If you do enjoy seeing these One Piece chapter reviews and want to keep them coming, channel your inner pirate king and smash that like button. If you haven't, join the Nakama right now by hitting that subscribe button and 
most importantly, hit that notification bell or you will miss future One Piece videos. And while you wait for the next intense chapter to drop, feel free to check out my growing One Piece playlist where I have videos about the Yonko, Warlords, Supernova, and much more. Link to that is in the description. And I especially want to thank the Patron Squad over on Patreon and here on YouTube who help make videos like this one possible. First and foremost, I want to thank the Patron of Legend, the one acknowledged by Lord Twigo himself, and the most donated champion of the world, Alpha Sigma, and are the one tier patrons, the ones who stand atop all clans, Ingrata, The World, Acquire Respect, Pate Heffa, Liam Thompson, Al Jatal, Dr. Cortman, Johnny Boy Draws, Emperor Otaku, Spidey Life Tanel, Baked Buddhist, and Tungsten Tarkis, and our Pro Hero tier patrons, the one and only Gilgamesh, Steelers, Angel Cruz, Anatoly Kazatsky, Joe Stanton, Very Gucci, Jessica Kayla Fondra, Thuin Deora, Alicia Actor, Bonnie Parks, Hinokami and Water, The Red Haired Raven, Joanne Garcia, Jack Watches Anime, Fat Boy Games, Deadly Saint, Matthew Cruz, and Anthony Schreiber. Thank you all so much much. If you enjoy our work, you can support more of it by going over to patreon.com slash anime uproar and becoming a patron today for as little as one dollar. If you do so, you'll get your name featured in future videos alongside these epic people right here and you'll even get access to our private patron only discord where we talk about anime life and of course dank memes. So check out patreon.com slash anime uproar link in the description if you're interested. You can also join the YouTube channel by clicking that blue join button next to the subscribe button that you've hopefully already discovered. Destroyed. So yeah, you can support more content that way if you prefer, and whichever way you choose to support us, you can get the same great benefits. Thanks again, and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys!